Hello, here we are again, Crasta Camper Van Kippers, and this is our second attempt at posting a video up to YouTube. Uh, this particular one is for anyone who's intending to fit their own Fiamma awning to the roof of their Fiat Ducato, Citroen Relay, or Peugeot Boxer. Having seen the instructions, I realised that if you were going to be gluing these things to the roof as well as bolting them down, there was the potential for it all to go sadly wrong. Yeah, so what we've done is we've made a video of ourselves fitting the Fiamma awning to the roof of our van. And because we are uh, sticking it down with adhesive as recommended by Fiamma, I felt that it was very important for people to perhaps watch this video and realise that you can't just go up there and bolt these things down. You have to pay a lot of attention to how you sight these things prior to this Sikaflex going off because it is horrendous to remove once it has set. So bear with us. I think the video is going to be approximately 15 minutes long. And yes, it probably reiterates the same things over and over a couple of times. But if you follow it exactly as we've done it, then I don't envisage that you would have any problems whatsoever when you ultimately come to place the awning on the roof of your van. Uh, we purchased a fitting kit which consists of three parts that look a bit like this. Uh, obviously the instruction book will explain exactly where on the van they should go. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing that when it turned up to put a black awning on a black van that the fitting kit was silver. So what we've actually done is pre-painted it and allowed it to dry with uh, black smooth right. Uh, the rest of the kit consists of the fittings which uh, attach it to the roof rack mounting points that are factory fitted to the van and in addition to that the Fiamma instructions specify that you use particularly Sikaflex 252. In our case we're using black of course. Now that with the Citroen Relay because the three fixing points are simply just three nubs that stick out of the roof of the van it would be very easy to just go up there nonchalantly bolt these on and then ultimately realize that they're out of alignment, they're not level, etc, etc. So what we're going to do first of all is attach them to the roof and using a, a builder's line we're going to ensure that they're all in perfect alignment and perfectly level in relation to each other, starting at the rear because that's the easiest one to fit, then the front and then lining up the middle one to, to conform to the, the two that are at the extremities. Early on in the build, when we fitted the uh, the bonded windows, it was suggested, or essential in fact, to prime the paintwork and prime the glass with this glass primer. We just happened to have some left over, so I just feel that it would be good practice to prime the paintwork on the roof of the van and perhaps even smear a, a slight coating of it on the aluminium prior to uh, putting down the Sigaflex. Okay, so as I said before, I have previously aligned all of these brackets up in relation to each other on the roof, masked off the area tight up to the side of the aluminium, and that way now I can confidently put masking all, al um, sorry, uh, mastic all the way along here and on here, and then not worry too much about it going over the edge. So here at the moment, what I'm doing is using the window bonding primer to prepare the paintwork ready to accept the mastic and also a little bit on the aluminium so as I've said before this particular one here will sit perfectly flat and straight in relation to the rest of the van and then what I'm going to do is once this one is set in position we'll align next the front one and then with the assistance of the builder's line we will set the middle one so that everything is in perfect alignment and then once the mastic has gone off the awning in theory will just clip perfectly into place and then can be tightened up. So as you can see here I'm not being shy with this stuff I would uh, put as much on as you possibly can so that by the time you come to press down the bracket towards the roof that you've got a cushion of at least three millimeters and then uh, once that has set 
and you can come along as I say later on and uh, just tighten that up a little bit more and as I say you'll have that good minimum of three millimeters protection from the paintwork. So in offering up the silver part of the bracket to the roof of the van the, the open slot of it goes towards the outer edge of the van and then as, a, as you can see you just very very carefully place the bracket down in line with the masking tape that's on the roof and uh, that should be it job done so just put the nuts on just up to where the nylock is and now i'm just going to position it exactly in alignment with the masking tape I do want to tighten this down but at this stage I'm not going to over tighten it I just want to nip it up allow the mastic to go off and then once it's cured I'm going to come along and then tighten it down even more effectively squeezing the already set uh, Sikaflex against itself to provide a little bit more cushioning because I suppose if I was to squeeze it all out whilst it's wet then it loses its effect and I may as well just go the aluminium tight to the roof of the van. Right, so now whilst this is wet, uh, I'm a bit particular when it comes to this sort of thing, so I'm just going to wet my finger. I know I should be wearing gloves, but in my experience, the gloves keep splitting and you may as well not be wearing them. So I'm just going to lick my finger and tool in the surplus mastic back in underneath the aluminium remove the mask and tape, let it set, and hopefully that'll be a nice tidy job. So I discovered that uh, Sikaflex is nothing like silicon, which I had previously used with bare hands. Uh, what I discovered was that having tooled this in, my fingers had black streaks on them for at least five days. So yes, do yourself a favor, get yourself some good strong gloves that won't split and uh, you'll never regret it. I also discovered that when it came to taking off the masking tape, because I had previously done it for two or three days, boy oh boy the glue on that tape did not want to come off the roof. So I just had to persevere with that one and then take it off later with some hot soapy water. And at the front end of the van, and this is the larger of the three brackets, and for a, a, a British van this is where this bracket should be. Uh, you'll see also that I have set my builder's string line up to the one at the rear and it passes quite nicely over the top of the one in the middle and looking down at it, well it's this one here, it's sitting quite nicely plumb and level across the top of the front bracket. So. If I was to fix all of these down, reattach the string line after I've done the front one, get the string back in this position, then I will confidently be able to set up the middle one and know that when all of this goes off, with a little bit of tweaking of tightening it down once the mastic has dried, that the awning in theory should just be perfectly aligned and clip straight into place. Now before I move on and do this front bracket, what I'm going to do is take off this masking tape and put some fresh masking tape on because boy oh boy leaving it on for three or four days was not a good idea the glue on this tape just does not want to give so I think when I've got the mastic on there it'll be much easier to take off fresh tape it does advise that when fitting these brackets to the roof it may be necessary to use shims to align all of these brackets in relation to each other however what I have found is that with my Citroen Relay there is this crease just behind the, the driver's cab and a big, great big lump of mastic and sealant that they've applied at the factory and then of course over painted and what I found was that this was forcing the whole bracket to be skew with. Now hopefully I ain't invalidated any warranty but what I simply did was I've cut the corner out of the front mounting bracket 
I've still left the vast majority of it uh, there to be stuck down to the roof but just by nipping that little corner out I found has made this job much much easier. I've put this bracket on and just loosely nipped up the nuts that are on the, the fixing bolts you'll see that my string line has now gone out of alignment uh, and that, that just demonstrates just how much free play and movement there can be on this if you just randomly bolt them down. So what I'm going to do now is just carefully position this bracket so that the bit the string line is back in place and then just very gently nip the nuts up just so as, as I said before I'm leaving a, a thickness of mastic allow that to cure and then nip it up finally for you know one last time and then uh, that should be exactly where I need it to be and still allowing some uh, damping between the bracket and the roof of the van. Set both the rear and the front brackets in relation to each other with the string line. We now see that the string line is a little bit off from the middle bracket. There'll be a couple of reasons for that, uh, not least the fact that the other two brackets are now sitting on a cushion of mastic, whereas they were previously bolted tight to the roof of the van. So what will happen now is we'll just take this one off, apply the mastic, the fresh masking tape and then I'll realign it to match this string line and then everything should be okay. So there we are, that's the middle bracket in perfect alignment with the string and I'm confident now if I allow that to go off that the awning should fit perfectly. Okay, so that's the brackets on now and uh, I know that when you've eagerly anticipated the arrival of your new toy, i.e. your lovely shiny awning, you'd be keen to get this bolted on and unfolded and admire your handiwork. However, I think it'll be best to give this a good couple of days to make absolutely certain that this mastic has gone off, get them tightened down because at this time of the year which is now October it's a bit cooler than normal and we're probably at the lower range of the recommended temperature for this mastic so uh, as I say we'll give it a good couple of days and we'll come back then and uh, for the grand unveiling hopefully of a successful awning installation. Well here we are, it's now three days later and uh, the weather's a lot better today so I thought I would do it outside uh, next to the sea where I'm very very fortunate to live. So just as we did when the mastic was wet, I'm going to start with the rear one and get that one tightened down, again the string line on and make sure everything's in alignment. center bracket is nicely in alignment with the string line from the back to the front and so we can confidently go ahead now and put the awning on. Now the next stage is to fit the weather strip to the roof of the van and you'll see on diagram 3 there the three brackets are labeled A, C and B and the shaded area in between is of course the weather strip. Now looking at that picture you'd think the weather strip would be towards the rear of the footprint of the brackets. However if you look at the insert and letter I looking at it from end on you'll see that in fact it should be positioned towards the front and of course that's where I've elected to do it for two reasons. Uh, a it makes more sense to put it there and B when you see the uh, the shape of the roof itself then that is the natural place that uh, a weather strip of that dimensions would naturally want to sit. Well, the day's come now to lift this thing up onto the roof, and as I've said before, it is kind of heavy, so I pressed gang Jake, my next door neighbour, into giving us a hand, and uh, we got it um, relatively easily up onto the roof and uh, got it into position, and that's where all that previous planning of making sure these brackets were correct was worth it because that awning just fell quite nicely into place and that allowed me to get up onto the roof and to begin tightening it down with the three bolts. 
Uh, it seems that all they do is simply push the awning against the bracket. Uh, perhaps it would have been best if there was some sort of fixing that somehow penetrated the awning somewhere. But it's done quite a few miles now and touch wood it hasn't yet fallen off. Well the day's come now to uh, try and unfurl this thing. Uh, we've waited patiently through wind and rain and this is about as good a day as we're going to get. So uh, my darling wife Lisa now is going to attempt to open it up for the first time and uh, we'll see how she gets on. Now I've seen a few videos where people will just wind these things out to the full extent straight away. Personally I don't think that's a good idea. I would highly recommend that you wind it out possibly a metre or just beyond a metre and then get the legs out and get them down onto the ground to take some of the weight. Because you probably know these awnings are quite heavy, they're about 30 to 40 kilos. So the bulk of that weight is going to be in this boom. So as I say you'd be better off getting the legs at least partially supporting the awning before you find it out fully. And now for the bit that could be a bit tricky, Lisa's just going to unclip the first leg, but make sure that you bring it far enough away from the awning to prevent this bit here catching on the outer casing. And now, just going to loosen the thumb screw and put the leg at an exaggerated angle pointing forwards so that obviously when the awning is unfurled it'll be as near to vertical as possible and, and of course offering maximum support. And now with the legs supporting the weight of the canopy we can now wind it out to its full extent which is two and a half meters I believe and then of course once it's fully out we can get the legs finally sighted to where they really really need to be. Now and there are a multitude of accessories that come with this awning and I uh, decided to purchase this which is the Rafter Pro. The advantage of the Pro being that it's slightly bent uh, which means that you can put tension on the canvas when it's fully unfurled and that will a stop it flopping around in the wind and also it will deflect any rain off to the various sides of the awning. And Lisa's just going to fit that now. Supplied with the awning there's a central clip slowly pull the rafter out and then if she can reach put it in the other one and now with the rafter in position you'll see that it it does push up the awning in the center slightly uh, we, we could of course fine-tune this and make it tighter again but it is quite a windy day at the moment and the awning seems to be rather steady there uh, another tip is when it is raining, if you're going to leave it out in the rain, is you could drop one of these corners to be ever so slightly lower than the other one and that would encourage the rain to run off the, the side of the awning rather than uh, any risk of it pooling in the middle. So I hope that video was of some use to you and if you did like it and you'd like to encourage me to do something along those lines in the future then please subscribe and any comments please leave them below thank you